That's right. There are a lot of dinosaurs with feathers. Now, for me personally, I think that especially T-Rex kind of has that peach fuzz going on in the back of its head. So I think for me, T-Rex looks a little something like this. So I like to think T-Rex has these little filaments on the back when it becomes an adult. Now, as a baby, maybe, yeah, fully feathered, you know, just that kind of downy feather that you see on like baby chicks and stuff like that. But personally for me, this thing is just, it's just too big to have that big floofy feathers. So this makes a little bit more sense to me. Now we don't have any evidence of any kind of animal losing feathers the way that this would if it did. Um, but just to me, it just kind of makes sense. You know, we do get the, the downy feather, um, being transferred into the big, like the big bird feathers, you know, but, um, with T-Rex, I just don't think it really makes sense. The fact that it even has sensory organs in the head to kind of regulate temperature. And just by moving, this thing is creating enough heat for it to, you know, withstand the environment. So it, I, I don't really think it needs feathers like, let's say, maybe Nanooksaurus. See, Nanooksaurus here lives in an area where it would snow. So maybe feathers would allow more heat to be trapped in to be able to uh, keep that body temperature that it needs. But I don't know. This, this could be completely inaccurate for all I know, but... I mean, I think it looks natural, it looks correct, so maybe one of these days we'll find a Nanooksaurus fossil that has feathers, or maybe we'll find one that doesn't, ha or find enough, I should say, that doesn't have feathers. So then we'll be like, oh yeah, Nanooksaurus doesn't have any feathers, because we just don't have the evidence for it. But, dinosaurs with feathers that are a very high possibility are something like Dromaeosaurus. These guys. Now these guys, we know, a lot of them do have feathers. Now, I don't know if they're as crazy as this guy over here, but um, Velociraptor, Atrociraptor, Pyroraptor, and Dromaeosaurus, for the most part, we do have proof that most of these, not species, but most Dromaeosaurus should have feathers, especially with Velociraptor up here, because um, on the forearm, uh, there are evidence of quill notches, so those are anchor points for those large flight feathers, these right here. So the anchor points for these, you can see them in the forearm right here. This is Dromaeosaurus, but that guy up there, that's that's Velociraptor. But there are evidence of quill notches in Velociraptor's forearms. Now, for the rest of them, I don't know, not quite sure, but definitely Velociraptor. Corythoraptor is another one that possibly has feathers. Um, this is part of the family that includes uh, oviraptor and other kind of uh, goby raptor. Uh, let's see, what was another one? Um, I don't know. There, there's there's a lot of um, dinosaurs that look similar to this, but they are uh, not dromaeosaurs. They may have the raptor name, but they are not dromaeosaurs. They don't have that sickle claw or anything like that. But a lot of them do have that big crest on the top of their head, and they have these really ugly mouths. They have like maybe one or two teeth in the front. They're almost like fangs. And for the most part, we think that they ate like maybe seeds or um, plants or maybe small lizards and stuff like that. But for the most part, they were herbivorous. Um, but yeah, these things, they're so strange. There's so many of these as well. There's a ton of them. Now, something that's not a dinosaur that have filaments they're not technically feathers they're kind of like the pre-evolution of feathers it's kind of where feathers got branched out into where dinosaurs are now this is hatsagopteryx this is my favorite pterosaur it's not pterodactyl pterodactyl is not even a thing that's not a name that scientists use um but hatsagopteryx is a uh isn't a as dark in there you go they are the very large giraffe-sized, uh, tall-wise, giraffe-sized uh, pterosaurs. Um, yeah, we would be on this thing's menu for sure. Um, now, Pteranodon, on the other hand, probably not. Pteranodon is what everybody thinks pterodactyl is. Um, we probably wouldn't be on their menu, but they definitely would have had these um, pycnofibers. That's what they call them. They're called pycnofibers. 
can see how it's kind of fuzzy all over the body and stuff even on even on the tips of the wings here these are the tips of the wings because they're, they're folded up so it can walk around which these things probably walked around a lot hunted uh, mated chilled out you know they, they probably walked around a lot but they have picnofibers, fibers so these are kind of like pre feathers so they're not really feathers but they're basically feathers you know what I mean so a lot of dinosaurs and some non dinosaurs as we saw do have some kind of some kind <laughs> some kind of filament um, but there are a lot of dinosaurs that just kind of don't really make any sense to have feathers just because of how big they are like sauropods we have no evidence of them having feathers so um, they most likely didn't need them like I said with T-Rex they were just way too big they got to 80 feet long I don't think those guys need feathers for cooling down or heating up because that's kind of what feathers are used for they're either for cooling down heating up or flying for the most part most sauropods like Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, uh, Patagotitan, um, you know, Titanosaurus, you know, all of the big sauropods, they probably didn't need any kind of feathers. And if they did, I'd be surprised, but maybe they used them for display because that's another uh, reason that some dinosaurs may have had feathers. They could have just been for display. Um, but I, something like that is just very hard to, to know for sure. Anything with dinosaurs is really hard to know for sure.